Hey you guys, in the second installment of How I Lost 300 Pounds, I want to talk about food. Now I'm going to try not to talk about things I've already talked about before and just rehash the same thing. I really want to kind of focus on what you guys expressed in the comment section when I asked the question about your weight loss journey struggles. Instead of sitting here talking at y'all, I decided to put up some pictures of different foods that I've eaten throughout my journey. Every um, picture and video is things that I've eaten throughout my journey. Um, y'all know I try to focus on um, moderation. I don't deprive myself. I just have a thing about saying no to myself. So I try to focus on moderation. I feel like with all the ups and downs, I have been very patient with my journey, learning from my mistakes. And with that, I think that will prevent me from ever gaining those 300 pounds back. I hope so. So far, so good. I'm probably going to say some things in this video that several will disagree with. We'll just fight about it in the comment section. So two things that stood out to me in the comment section from you guys was depriving yourself and late night eating. These are two things that I struggled with as well at the beginning of my journey. That is the reason why I focused on eating whatever I want to eat but just doing it in moderation because I knew that if I told myself no to everything that I wanted to eat I would not last on this journey so again I focus on moderation if I want candy I have candy I just have a little bit and I know that that's easier said than done yes I have bought a candy bar many times saying that I'm gonna eat half now and half another day and end up eating the whole thing so um, I understand that but it's all about being persistent when you make a mistake saying oh I made a mistake I ate too much or I did this or whatever you may have done um, just be persistent don't give up continue to push forward so my issue with late night eating, and hopefully this helps someone, um, I didn't, I wasn't eating in the morning, and that was my issue. So I was eating at, um, I was start eating at 12 or 2 o'clock in the evening, and then I didn't give myself a cutoff point. I would be eating at 10, 11 o'clock at night because I was hungry, you know? So I didn't get, I, I, I was eating late in, in the daytime, and I didn't give myself a cutoff point, and I was eating very unhealthy boxes of Little Debbie cakes, um, whole things of um, peach fago, and I was going to sleep on that stuff. So again, that was a process. I had to start training myself. I'd start eating smoothies in the mornings or drinking smoothies, eating breakfast, um, eating two and three meals a day, a couple of snacks during the day, plenty of water. And when I fill up during the daytime, I didn't get hungry at night. And um, sometimes, you know, I fluctuate my time. I'll stop eating at five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock. It just depends. But and when I started eating earlier in the daytime, making sure I got all my food in, I didn't have those late night cravings. Also, another reason why I think I was having late night cravings is because I wasn't eating full meals during the daytime. I was eating chips here, a snack cake here, and then late night I wanted food. So take that into consideration as well. Every single diet program is the same. What? Yep. That's what I said. And I'm not talking about the diet, a diet that like your doctor would give you a special diet for health reasons or anything like that. I mean, Jenny Craig, from, from Jenny Craig to Weight Watchers to Nutrisystem to the military diet, from the cabbage soup diet to the pea soup diet, they're all the same. They all have the same agenda. And that's cutting calories and carbs it's just all wrapped up in a different package and of course that's great that all of those plans are out there because we all have different needs everybody has different schedules people eat different like different foods so it's great that all of those plans are out there but we just have to keep in mind that it is just that simple it just comes down to cutting calories and cutting carbs when trying to lose weight 
and of course up in that water. Exercising is awesome on a weight loss journey, of course, for toning, for just for your overall health. You should always do some type of exercising each week, several times a week. But you can lose weight without exercising. Um, as y'all know, I lost about 80 to 100 pounds without exercising. I think when you first start a weight loss journey, you need to take time and get to know food because food is the problem. So I think we need to get to know food all over again. That's what I did. And I got to know like the foods that I would normally not eat. Like, oh my goodness, like five, six years ago, I would have never thought that spinach and broccoli just with a little bit of salt and pepper would be some of my favorite food. So while I was learning food again, I was also learning to eat in moderation and also learning to eat, you know, at a certain schedule, stop eating at six o'clock, you know, things like that. So that process took me about a year. In that year, I did little to no exercise and I lost a lot of weight. But keep in mind, I was 481 pounds. Later, we will discuss products that I've used throughout my journey to help with cravings, suppressing my appetite, things like that. But I think that um, first we need to realize that a lot of the problem with food is just as simple as us just changing our routine, changing the way we do things, making better food choices. And sometimes it really is just that simple. Also, getting a hobby helps with weight loss. At my biggest, I had a lot of idle time. And with that idle time, I sit at the computer and I ate. Now I have several jobs. I'm a college student. I just have so much going on with my life. I don't have time to sit back and think about food like I used to. So that helps out a lot. This weight loss journey has so many challenges and another challenge is depending on someone else for food when you don't buy your own food or cook your own food and that can be a very very challenging thing but that is when you really really have to focus on portion control. You can eat the same things which, which is fine but you have to focus on portion control if you don't have any other options. I grew up in Alabama and I think a lot of you guys story is similar to mine um, everything about my life was food um, weddings birthdays funerals let's just go to the house and kick it everything even even if you just go to the house and kick it it's, it's about food food will be there somebody has to stop and get food I think that these are traditions or habits that have been passed on from generation to generation. And for me, it was time to stop passing it on. I treat my addiction to food just like someone would treat their addiction to alcohol or drugs. It's a process and it's something that I have to live with every single day in order to not fall back into my old habit. I hope that this video was helpful. I hope I was able to express um, my relationship with food throughout this journey and answer all of you guys' questions. I love you guys and I will see y'all in the comment section. Every single food featured can be found in the playlist What I Ate Today, Meals and Desserts. And of course, I will link it in the description box. Stay motivated, you guys.